Welcome back, Akron fans, to Losers Round 2 of the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. I'm Shadow Fury 33 with the second series for tonight. It's going to be Shardan versus Haiku. And we saw both of them play last quite some time ago, actually. Shardan was busy, I think, so he didn't get to play these matches for quite some time. But now they have been played, so we will be watching them as that's up next. So whoever wins this goes up against Kitan. Whoever loses is out of the tournament. And we saw Vermine versus Jericoon on Kratoria just before. Vermine beating Jericoon, and then Jericoon just forfeited apparently the rest of the tournament. So a bit of an anticlimactic finish. But Shardan versus Haiku is hopefully going to be more interesting. Or at least not going to involve forfeiture. That was actually, I think, the first forfeiture of the tournament. I think. There might have been one more. But this is quite good. This is actually... This is the best... Uh, in a way, attended tournament ever. Like, used to be we had tournaments where half the people starting out would just leave or like, not play their games or just forfeit, and then no one else would play. But this is actually, this is pretty good. I mean, loses round two and there's a forfeiture. Well, that's quite a ways in, and that's, that's fine. I mean, forfeitures are perfectly valid. It's just kind of nice when people, when you do have more matches to play and cast. And Anyway, moving on to the game. After that little die trap. First map will be Snowblind. Starting out with Guardian. Oh, Chardon calling himself Guardian now. To the west and Haiku to the east. Chardon, we saw it just was starting out with Vekir, and Haiku is going to be going for probably CISO. Knowing Haiku, CISO is very likely. Oh. Interesting. I'm not sure exactly what Chardon's commenting about. I'm assuming he has an in... Ah, yeah, he has an Intel chip. I'm guessing. Apparently a long-standing texture bug was fixed on those. Anyway, Haiku's still choosing his species. I'm not sure exactly what's taking him along because he's probably going to be playing CISO. <laughs> and Haiku's thinking the same thing, or was thinking back then the same thing I am now. So, Chardon's setting up, getting five Liquid Crystal RPs, on this map, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for just a quick Q Plasma RP right now. But no, he's going for a sixth Lick Crystal RP. Fairly standard economic opening. Probably going to go for QP RPs at this point. But he might get a couple more Lick Crystal RPs. Nope, going for Q Plasma immediately. And scouting out, he does see that Haiku has not yet chosen a species. Haiku, on the other hand, is in fact going for Grekim, not CISO. We'll see how that works out. I do recall him going, CISO, or going for Grekim against... He went to Grekim his last game? I'm trying to remember. That was against me. No, he went it was 2-0 against me. So yeah, that that was somebody else who went and decided to do a species swap. I think it was Oh yeah, a Cybernetic Pony that went Grekim. Just on a whim. Didn't turn out for him. But we'll see how it works for Haiku. Not going for CISO and Chardon, on the other hand. Just beating up that species selector. Okay, now he's actually seeing that Haiku is going for Grekim. So Grekin versus Vekir, and that's actually the second Grekin versus Vekir we've seen today. Though admittedly, I don't mind the fact that there wasn't CISO on Kratoria because CISO gets weird on Kratoria. Infantry rushes are very powerful there. But I digress. Snowblind does not have neutral teleporters, so it's not a concern. But what is a concern is the fact that it is a fairly small map, and this Arcticus is going to be scouting out what Guardian is up to, or Sharadan is up to. And Kashardan and Guardian, same person, different names. Haiku is going for a proxy! He is moving his try, going for a game one proxy. Not at all surprising, being that, well, proxy strategies are quite powerful. Shardan, I don't believe, is going to see this, and he's actually not even paying attention at that point in time. So Haiku, moving away, moving around with these units, trying to avoid them, and setting up a proxy triad. Try to end this game quickly. I mean, Haiku is very fond of proxies, so this does not surprise me. And game one is the game where you throw in your crazy strategies just to try to... You try to get that first game, because if you get that first game, in the second game, you can do whatever. It doesn't matter if you lose or win. I mean, if you win, then you're done. You've won that series. But if you lose, you still have another game to go. Very comfortable position to have one game one. So Haiku clearly just trying to go for that early. And of course, if he loses, well, there's still two games he can prove himself in. If he loses game one, he still has game two and three. Chardon, on the other hand, is going for a much more mid to late game strategy. Fairly standard, three three and a half minute depot with three Q Plasma RPs, not four, but still it should be enough for getting a couple Zion Pulsers. Now, it really will come down to whether or not Haiku notices or Haiku is noticed. 
I mean, at the 206 mark, he has his proxy up, and Chardin is not paying attention to that. He's not moving out. He's not really scouting too much. He's at the 422 mark, and Haiku at the 330... Well, actually, at the 320 mark, he's pretty frighteningly set up. Now, it really comes down to, like I said, whether or not it's spotted, and I don't think Chardin is going to spot it. His scouts have gone past the base. He should be suspicious, though. I'm sure he's probably figured out that something is up. And it doesn't matter, though, because... Even if he has figured it out, he's already seen it come in. It's it's too late for him to figure it out. He now has to deal with it. And he's at the Implable Pass Edge trying to do so. I'm not sure... Okay, he's trying to build Zion Veer and trying to build some foundations. I'm surprised he's not moving these guys back. He's moving the Shinden Chef Veer back just to try to deal with this as best he could while it was in transit. And it looks like he is, in fact, doing that. But unfortunately, on an attack move, not on a move, so they're still stuck hitting the Arcticus until it goes down. And I don't think Haiku was using the Arcticus. He was not using the Arcticus as a command center. He was just using it to tank damage. So it's not going to actually stop his attack at all. And Haiku coming in at the 252 mark. This is about a minute up from the Implable Pass. So Shardon still has a bit of time, but not a whole lot. Haiku is at the 211 mark. This is when he's building up, just double checking it. It looks like he is not changing anything. What could he possibly change? No, he is changing one thing. Getting an Octopod instead. He did actually... Okay, he moved one of his resource processors over to Q-Plasma. And got an Octobot on top of everything else. That is... get And Guardian pointing out that he messed up getting his units back. And unfortunately, he did. So, looks like he's going to try to go for what I mentioned before. Foundation supported Zion Veer. But that really only works best against Octos. Against Faros, it can work okay because... Zion Veer, I should say. Not Shin Veer. Zion Veer are the key. I mean, it works okay against Shinveer, or sorry, against Faros as well, but I'm not sure why he's going for Shinveer and not Zionveer. Admittedly, there is a range advantage. I can see that. But Shinveer do not deal that much damage against Grand against anything, really. They're they deal about 6 6.8 damage per second to ground compared to the Zionveer's 11. So it's about half as much damage as the Zionveer. They do have twice as much range, but probably not gonna make that big of a difference. Now Haiku has jumped back about a minute and is in fact. Doing a lot of damage. The Octobot able to just take care of everything that comes at it. Getting rid of the base. Shardon trying to do what he can, but this is... I mean, this isn't even what Shardon's paying attention to. He is just... He is well, he was oblivious to this. He's now fully aware of what's going on and unable to really do much about it. And that is game. Shardon throwing in the towel. Game 1 goes to Haiku. So we'll have Game 2 shortly. But probably... It should be here in less time than this game took to finish. But we shall see. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with round two, or series two of, well, game two of series two of Losers Round Two. And this is actually the correct one this time. I'm not just getting caught up in my own rhyming of the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. Jardin versus Haiku. And Haiku did a really good job last game with a nice rush. Nice proxy that Jardin didn't quite spot in time on Snowblind. And this game looks to be no different. It's going to be an overgrown Citadel, which we've seen before, and which is a very, very, very rush-friendly map. You pretty much can only do rushes on this map, at least as of late. Though, there was a time in the long-distant past where you could actually have 20-minute games with Sepipods and Firepods coming in and chronoporting. Admittedly, you probably still could now if the players weren't able to quite get through each other with their rushes. But I expect Haiku's going to go for a powerful proxy. Now, of course, on this map, being that this map is so small, it's probably going to be a case where Haiku's going to... If he tries to make a proxy over here somewhere, or even up there, it's likely that Shardon will be able to spot it. And Shardon being Guardian, same player. It's pointing out. Anyway, so Shardon slash Guardian is going to be able to see what's going on more easily than he would have on Snowblind. Now, of course, that does come down to whether or not he looks, but given Snowblind, I doubt he's going to let himself be fooled that easily once again. Now, Haiku still going for Grekum. Looks like he's going to go for the same thing. And Shardine, once again, Vekir. And he's getting very early Q Plasma. Looks like he's going for an early Depot, which, on a map like this, not, not at all surprising. And an early Octopod coming in for Haiku, the early Q Plasma. That's all it can really be used for. And there is that duo. Shardon spots him on their way out, and Shardon not actually dealing with it, yet he is... Okay, he's jumped up to deal with it. He was a minute down from there, dealing with affairs right at the edge... Or at the beginning of time, or beginning of the game, at least. Still doing so, getting his 
economy up and running. We'll have that manage sorted soon enough. Anyway, Haiku is setting himself up. He does have an Octopod and an Octo coming in at the 136 mark. It's going to be quite a bit of damage, but it's also going to mean... Shardon can actually deal with this. And I'm a little bit surprised on this map against Grekin that he's going for the early depot. I mean, like I said, it's something you could do on this map because early depot. But on the other hand, it's not early Zion Veer with foundation support, which you need a lot of Liquid Crystal to support. You need all your RPs and Liquid Crystal to actually support that build. And I'm not sure if Shardon actually meant to do it that way. And apparently he did. He is, in fact, building a fourth Liquid Crystal, or third Liquid Crystal RP, but a fourth RP at all. And getting his foundation, going to get Zion Veer fairly soon after. And it looks like he is relying on distracting Haiku's progenic forces for as long as he can. And Haiku species switches. Okay, this is going to work out a lot better, though admittedly it does mean that foundation, not wasted, but Haiku is going to... I mean, he's going to try to trick Shardan. Shardan should be able to spot this and figure out that he can just go for a depot from here. Now, whether or not Haiku goes for... Probably infantry rush, that's likely what he's going to go for. Heavy on the infantry, possibly get a couple Lancers. So I'm expecting Shardan will be getting some Zion Pulsers, but wouldn't be surprised if he got Teth Pulsers as well, just in case the Lancers came in. Now Haiku, at the 124 mark, let's see what he's up to. Actually, Shardan, just jumping back, let's see what he... He is not changing anything from the looks of it. He knows that Haiku is going for CISO, probably going to commit to CISO, though Haiku might go for a last-second re-swap, jumping back to Grekum with the orders that he had already set in, so that Grekum already handles what it's doing. But he doesn't have much time to do that. In fact, he... Only has no. He's not doing that. He is committed. To this. He is committed to this. He. The species swap is in the unplayable past. It's very hard to tell right now, but yes, it is in the unplayable past. There is no way Haiku can switch right back to Grekim. He is stuck with CISO, getting a factory probably for an early lancer. Getting more infantry and Haiku on the other hand. Sorry, Chardon on the other hand is getting his depot up. He is getting a Zion Pulsar up. And it is going to be in time. Admittedly, we don't see it from now, because Haiku's point of view is what has the imagery. But that that Zion Pulsar is going to be coming up more or less in time for the Marines. The Marines will get a few shots off, but the Depot will be able to tank it for the time being. And another Zion Pulsar. Never mind! Both Zion Pulsars will be up in time, and the imagery will not last. There they go, and a counterattack will soon be coming in. Now, Haiku likely to send a Lancer to deal with this, but of course, Shardan does have... A healthier economy. He has one extra one extra resource processor, which is on Q Plasma, mind you, but still, he has it, needs it. He can get a test pulsar probably fairly easily. Yeah, he actually. Well, let's see. Shardan has 87 and 26. Yes, a test pulsar is definitely viable, but no, he is going for another Zion pulsar. I'm a little bit surprised he's not anticipating a Lancer coming in. Now, Heiko, on the other hand, not actually sending a Lancer yet. This is probably just a question of yet. He's likely to send a Lancer because there's no reason not to against Vecchio. But. On the other hand, maybe he expects Shardan has already gone for Teth Pulsar. And actually going for ATHC, not Lancer. Interesting choice. I'm not entirely sure why he's going for ATHC. I mean, it would allow the infantry to be... It would allow him to get in range. It would, it would tank damage somewhat. But it's not that tough. It's tougher than the infantry, but not by, by a factor of two. Okay. It's just Lancer is more likely what you'd use because Zion Pulsar cannot hit air. Granted, you do want a bit of a tank. So I can see why the ATHCs are used. But Lancer cannot be hit by Zion Pulses, period. Now, Shardon, on the other hand, he is going in for an attack. He is at the, three, at the four minute mark, going in for an attack, going with proxy foundations just for the healing, but not enough money quite yet to actually build it. Looks like he's going to be moving back in a retreat. Can't quite make it work without the proxy foundation, apparently, which is not surprising. Definitely a useful thing to have. And it actually, at Haiku's point of view, it is spotted, and the Zion Pulsers are retreating, so... Shardan was able to get out of there, but unfortunately not able to build his foundation. Still, that ATHC, ATHC is taking a lot of damage, and CISO does not have any free healing. They, in fact, do not have any healing below the Macrofab level, so that ATHC's damage is stuck. Or I should say, no healing for vehicles below Macrofab level. The Special Ops do heal other infantry. Oh, actually, Monkey is pointing out that the ATHCs would deal with Zion Turtle shenanigans, and while that is a concern... On a map this small, with the rushes coming in this fast, a Zion Turcher is possible, but Zion Pulsers are much more likely. It's really a metagame question at that point, but I would say 
the main reason would be tanking for the Lancers. Because the Lancers can't stop the Zion Pulsers from attacking the rest of the base. They can kill them without being hit, but they can't actually stop them from de dueling... Can't stop them from dealing any damage to the base. ATHCs can by basically being just meat shields. I don't know if that's what Haiku was thinking, but that's the only reason I can think of offhand. Now, like, I mean, design torture is possible. In fact, it gets more and more likely with time, especially as Shardan is able to build up an economy behind cover of his Zion Pulsers, but I think Haiku... Well, he didn't have any Zion Tertius to deal with, so those ATHCs didn't do a whole lot. They are going to move around to try to raid the back of Shardon's base to try to avoid the Zion Pulses entirely. Now, whether or not Lancers come in is left to be seen. No infantry are coming in either. Oh no, Lancer, there we go. A Lancer is being built, so Haiku is going to go for that while raiding Shardon's base. Unfortunately, I mean, he is hitting the building, he's hitting the Annex, which isn't terribly bad. But at this point, it's just... I'm not sure how much that's going to do, seeing as... And this is what I mean, the Lancer can damage the Zion Pulsers, but it doesn't hit them that hard, and although it can't be hit in return, it doesn't stop them from destroying the rest of the base. So Shardan, at this point, seems to pretty much have this game, and he is coming in, sending back the Zion Pulsers. Not sure if this was a good idea, he could have just built another Zion Pulsar inside the base to deal with the ATHCs. But even with that, he is still able to deal quite a bit of damage with that Zion Pulsar. Unfortunately, these Marines could come in and deal with it. Haiku is probably going to do that as well, and yes, he's not. No, there he is, okay, he is actually going to deal with that. Getting infantry in there, and they will take care of the Zion Pulsar with no issues, no losses even. In fact, that armory survived as well, so Haiku able to get rid of it because it was a single Zion Pulsar rather than the three Zion Pulsars that were there before. Now, Guardian on the other hand, sorry, Shardan I should say, well, same player. Shardan slash Guardian needs to attack again with everything. Three or four Zion Pulsars will do the trick. They will tear down Haiku's base, and that will be game. One at a time, of course, they will not. But five at a time, they will. And it looks like that is what he is planning on doing. Now, Shardan, I don't think he's going to go for Skip Teleport. He's still building up more of an army. I'm a little surprised he hasn't built more RPs, but now he's coming in with more Zion Pulses. Jumping back to where Haiku is at the 550 mark. No, that was a mistake. That was old information. Not relevant. Those Zion Pulses did not go to attack. This is what we're looking at. This is the present state of the game. And it is the most up-to-date state of the game. Now, Lancer is set up for defense, trying to get rid of this Zion Pulsar before it has a chance to do much. And a mech has been built. Haiku does not have machinery yet. I think he might be going for that to try to get defense turrets. Possibly going for a macrofab. And actually, no, the way his money is going, he is definitely going for a macrofab in the back of his base. From here, probably going to get... Hmm. Martanks, maybe. Not sure exactly what he could go for. In fact, at this point, it's going to be... Interesting. He can't really be sure what Shardan's up to if Shardan's teching up. And Shardan is getting a foundation. He could be going for an aerial control center. And at that point, he'd have to worry about Teth Turchers. So I think a frigate army is likely what Haiku's going for. Probably going to expect that Teth Turchers will be incoming, and thus frigates to be built. Mars, on the other hand, maybe? But that seems kind of unlikely to me. Somehow I think that the Mars would just not be used. I think that he'd end up going with frigates instead. Just because Martanks... Against against Zion Pulsers, that's not what you'd want to use to tank them. You'd probably just want to use tanks. Mar tanks do have a decent amount of health, and they are kind of tank destroyer, but against five Zion Pulsers, I'm really not sure. Frigates seem more likely just in case Teth Turchers come in. But it doesn't matter, because the Zion Pulsers are in fact what is coming in. Haiku preparing for possibly the wrong thing, though he does have Lancers to help out. The Lancer, one of the Lancers will actually be able to get rid of the Zion Pulsar before it deals too much damage, but still, the other Zion Pulsar there to help out. And Shardon... And the north side and the south side hitting from both ramps and dealing quite a bit of damage, getting rid of the infantry, getting rid of the armory, getting rid of the importers, that's the biggest thing. And that basically means nothing can be built from the macrofab. Nothing at all, completely crippling that macrofab right as it comes up. Now, Haiku, I think, never had a chance. There was never a chance for him to actually deal with that. So that macrofab was a complete waste of cash, unfortunately. And I think Haiku has lost this game and is going to be on to game three. Now, Chardon, I... He is not expecting anything from this other than victory. Sending in some Teth Pulsers just in case to get rid of the Lancers, but even then I don't think that's going to be necessary, except if Haiku decides not to surrender just to be a jerk, but I doubt he's going to do that. He's he's more polite than that. So I expect Haiku's going to throw in the towel any second now. Haiku looks like he's just double-checking and see if there's anything he can possibly do. Maybe set up a backdoor or backyard importer, maybe escape with one of the... No, I can't escape with one of the Marines. The Well, actually, he could, actually. Along the south ramp, he could do that once the Zion Beer is dead. 
build another importer, admittedly it'll take a minute, and I think a minute is going to be too much time. It looks like it very much... Yes, it very likely will be, but... The mech is in position. The mech could actually go down and build the importer as well, but it looks like... No, the infantry are taking advantage of the open south ramp to counterattack, but I think this is going to... No, it's going to be all for not test pulsers coming along the south. Zion pulsers getting rid of the RPs and... Eventually get rid of the macrofab as well, and I think Haiku... Desperately trying to get out of here, but the Teth Pulsar spots the infantry. It won't live, but it at least knows what's going on. And Shardan jumping back about a minute or so. Getting more Teth Pulsars, and... Probably... Looks like he is, in fact... He is moving his Zion Pulsar down, one of his Zion Pulsars down, to deal with the infantry over here. The other one still left to deal with the resource processors, and down go the infantry. At least, mostly, the Zion Pulsar getting a bit distracted by losing a spotter, but... That's done, and Haiku throws in the towel. That is game. Shardan takes game two. So moving on to game three in just a minute. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Akron fans. This is the final match of Series 2 of the Losers Round 2 of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament. Shardan versus Haiku, and Shardan won the last game with a, well, basically a solid build. He just got a fairly early depot, got enough Zion Pulsars, and pushed through, powered through, and avoided any proxy attempts from Haiku. Now we're going to be on Desecrated Temple, which once again is a harder map to detect proxies on, and a much, much, much easier map to proxy on. It's also just a larger map, has four starting locations. It's also my favorite map, but I've mentioned that before. And it is the map we're going to be playing on now. So let's get started. Shardan in the north side of the map, Haiku the south side. We're at cross positions on this map. Shardan once again going for Vekir and Haiku. What's he starting out with? He is starting with a species selector. Still deciding, possibly. I think he might be waiting for time waves to pass before he actually sets this. Okay, he's moving forward. He is going to go for a species switch. Whatever he does. It's not honest. Going for Vekir initially. But he's far enough in the future that he can species switch from here. I expect him to place a bookmark now. Now Shard on the other hand, he is setting up his economy, getting an early first resource processor early, and the rest on Liquid Crystal. A map like this, not at all surprising. He'd want to go for a fairly safe economic build. Now Haiku on the other hand is going for... Well, not sure exactly what yet. Some sort of misdirection from the looks of it. But admittedly, Haiku has actually played all three species this game. Admittedly, primarily... Well, actually, primarily Grek, I'm going to think of it. But we'll see what he's up to from here. My guess is... Well, I probably just to mislead Haiku. Maybe trying to make him... Or mislead Shardan. Maybe trying to make him think that... Let's see, Vekir versus Vekir. That's... Not really sure there's anything there that would be misleading compared to Vekir versus Ciso. There probably is. I'm sure someone in the chat will point out that there is a difference. Although, on the other hand, Haiku may actually be going for this honestly. I kind of doubt that, given that he went at 10 seconds to actually choose his species, so he had plenty of time to species switch. Anyway, Shardon is getting his economy just straight going. Haiku, on the other hand, is getting very early foundations, and now jumping back to his species selector. And... I think we're going to be seeing the honest... No, okay, going for Grekim this time. A little late if he wants a species switch. He might still be able to, but I kind of doubt it. We'll see if this is his honest play in about a minute or so. It looks like he's trying to go for one species on each timeline. Setting up scouting for Vekir in this one timeline. So basically just trying to keep Shardan in the dark about his species selection. It looks like this time wave might be... Like the green time wave is carrying Vekir. And then the next red time wave will carry Grekim. And I'm guessing after that he's going to try to have the following one care oh maybe well he's going in for not quite a proxy but definitely no he's going for a proxy with the grecum i mean whether or not he commits to this we'll see he's only got about another 30 seconds of real time to species switch once again if he wants to switch to see so and the red time of his past he could do that if he wants to make everything confusing for shardan con well continue to be confusing so shardan right now thinks that haiku is playing vekir and Shardan not acting on this quite yet, going for economy. This is kind of what I meant. I mean, at this stage in the game, and this size of map, it's going to be Econ, Econ, three and a half minute depot. And that's exactly what Shardan's going for, and he would have gone for that regardless of what Haiku was playing. 
And it looks like Haiku is not actually changing up a species. He is going to be committing to Grekim. I th it would appear... Yes, he is. He's... He has to. <laughs> Definitely does now. The unplayable past has gone and overwhelmed his species selection choice. And Guardian Shardon is going into the depot. Like I said, this is what he'd do regardless of anything. Now, Haiku has been found out. Guardian, that is Shardon, knows what he's up to. He doesn't know about this Octopod over here in the northwest side of the map. He doesn't know about the proxy, but... Actually, to be perfectly honest, I think he's not hes not paying attention. Shardon is quite a ways up from here, focusing on his economy, focusing on development. Not so focused on proxy, although admittedly on this map there's a lot of places to check. But still, he is not checking any of them. And in fact, has not even double-checked to see what Haiku is up to as Grekim. I'm a little bit surprised at this. I think Shardon... I mean, okay, we can't judge Shardon's actions right now. He is not looking at this point in time. But the fact that he's not looking at this point in time... I'm surprised. I, I really am. I think he actually might even not, not even realize that... Okay, now he sees it. Now he sees that Grekim. For sure he knows what's going on. And... Okay, jumping back to double check for a proxy. Or double check to see if there's anything in the base. He should be able to figure out that a proxy is going on now. There's no reason he would have to not suspect that. Like I said though, it's not going to change the strategy too much except to find the proxy and then... Know where to attack. That's the big thing. Uh, knowing that there's a proxy is useful, but knowing where the proxy is is absolutely vital. If he knows where the proxy is, that's going to help him a lot. Though admittedly, it looks like he's not searching for that with his infantry. He's going to just try to shut down Haiku's operations as best as possible. And actually, Haiku has hardly any liquid crystal to begin with. This is going to be fairly devastating. In fact, Haiku's going to pretty much just have I mean, a few Octos, but it comes down to whether or not Shardon will be able to defend this. And if Shardon is able to defend this, he will win. Because Haiku will run out of resources. He'll have nothing to easily rebuild with. He does have some stuff, but he does, if he runs out of resources, I mean, it's one liquid crystal RP, yes. But if he runs out of liquid crystal, he's actually going to have a hard time proxy attacking, and the longer he takes to proxy attack, the easier it is for Shardon to find the proxy and deal with it ultimately, though admittedly he's not working towards that. Now Haiku, on the other hand, at the three minute mark, he is starting to build up, well, he's starting to run away, getting his RPs out of the way, trying to avoid being completely locked out, trying to avoid completely running out of resources, but still... He is kind of low on them. He has a much weaker economy than Shardon has. And his main strength was surprise in the military. And the fact is, he did... He's going to the northwest. I'm not sure if Shardon's going to take that as a signal that that's where the proxy is. But it's definitely something where it might be... It's something that's kind of suspicious. I mean, the fact that he's going to that base as opposed... To, I mean, admittedly, he wouldn't go here, but he might have gone over to, say, the corner base. Just to th try to throw off the scent. As it stands, though, Shardon knows where those RPs are going. So at the very least, if he chases down the RPs, he's going to find the proxy as well. If for no other reason to try to kill the RPs, because why wouldn't he? I mean, clearly a proxy's happening, so get rid of the resources. But, yeah, I don't know why Haiku sent them over right next to his proxy. Maybe he's relying on Shardon not actually finding the proxy in time. Which, given that the Octopod is attacking pretty early, in fact, we'll see Haiku jumping back to the 353 mark when the depot's under construction and the... Octopod is actually able to deal a fair amount of damage to it. Shardon not paying attention to this point in time quite yet. And now has jumped back to deal with it. Looks like he's... Well, he's aware of what's going on. Does not have anything up yet. And it looks like his own RPs are being hit. But Shardon, on the other hand, had a lot of money saved up. He's going to be able to build still his... A couple of his Zion Pulsers. Not all of them. Only two out of the five that he had before. But it looks like that was still... No, that wasn't even dependent on this. So he is... Fine. He's absolutely fine. And another Zion Pulsar is coming in to join with the other two. And this Octopod will not last too long against three Zion Pulsars with Depot healing. So the Zion Pulsar is going to jump back into the Depot. And then Shardon will go on the offensive. Now Haiku, of course, does have his economy safe behind this proxy. So there's only the only way that it's going to die is for the proxy to be destroyed. But still, Shardon, that's his first target. That's the first place he's going to go. Is to the southwest. The third base right next to the southwest corner between the west and south bases. No reason to go anywhere else, really. And once that happens, then that will basically be game. And let's see, Shardon is actually going to do the west base directly. He's possibly, exp he's overshooting slightly, but he he's still on the right track. Expecting the RPs to have flown over here. Not a bad guess, because it is a more defensible position than the area in the southwest. But I don't think that mistake was going to cost him too much. He still has a big economic and military advantage. Haiku has lost the timing window for his proxy. He's given away that the proxy exists and approximate location. I mean, as soon as Shardon finds that it, 
none of the RPs flew over here to the west or to the west natural. He's going to look to the southwest and he's going to find exactly what he wants to find. Haiku, a minute down from here, has... Well, he has a bit more economy. He's got another QPRP and he does have more Octobots coming up. Another Octo, but really this is not going to last. And the Arctic is going over to the east base, apparently trying to build up a base from scratch. It's going to cost a lot. It's going to cost about 180 liquid crystal, but he might be able to pull it off and reef support to the southwest as well. So Shardan trying to just get around this, and Shardan, sorry, Haiku trying to get around this. Shardan finding the RPs, finding the proxy, and Haiku apparently just trying to make sure he has insurance effectively. And Shardan getting auto defense, I suppose just in case, since he is out of his base. All of his forces are moving to deal with the proxy. Hasn't quite found it yet, but he will, okay, now he's found it. He definitely knows, not even looking at the west bases. Going to the southwest, and this is going to be, this is it, really. This is what's going to decide the game, how Shardan deals with this. Now, Haiku getting a full bubble, actually more than a full bubble wrap, getting four reefs, not the, more than the usual three. And his Arcticus is set up. He's, the Haiku has 119 Liquid Crystal right now. He can build one of these. And it looks like he is not actually worried about it. He is instead focusing on the proxy, trying to defend that. Setting that up and... Making a Valiant last, last stand. I guess he's expecting that if he does lose, he'll end up able to rebuild at this Arcticus over here. A little surprised he's not going for quite yet, but on the other hand, if he doesn't, he could lose this. Granted, he's going to lose this regardless. I mean, there's what, nine Zion Pulsars coming in from Shardan. This is going to be game. As soon as Shardan goes to the... Actually, not as soon as... Shardan's already gone for the offensive with proxy foundations and everything. And this is already game. Haiku is not... He's going to jump back to see what happened at the start, so we'll see what happens when he does so. There it is. Now, Haiku's jumping back to the start of this attack. Right as it starts, actually, right as the bubble wrap is under construction, perfect timing by Sharadon. Not sure if he intended to do that, but definitely the perfect timing. The Reef's completely unable to heal up. The Octopod, not able to see the Zion Pulses, let alone destroy them. A couple of the Reef's still able to heal up a bit, but not enough to deal with all of these Zion Pulses and the Reef Foundations for them as well. And Haiku throws in the towel. That is game! That is game, that is match, that is the series. So, that's also going to be it for tonight. So, Shardan beat Haiku 2-1 to one in an exciting but very rapid set of games. So, loses round 3, which will probably be tomorrow, is going to be Monkey versus Vermind and Chitin versus Shardan. And then whoever wins out of those will fight amongst themselves to try to beat the person who wins, who loses between God and Cybernetic Pony. And whoever wins that gets a chance at the finals. So we'll see what happens. But for now, that is going to be it. So thank you all once again for watching. And have a good night, everybody.